Way. It looks like Calcano is at four cards and Shrout is at six. Yeah, that believes Calcano on four, Shroud on six. We're going to go ahead and start. Calcano leads off on a Blood Crypt. Wait, does he actually, does he even have three cards still in his hand or is he uh, down to two? I think he's down to, looks like he's down to three cards. Okay. <laughs> so they're going to have to be good ones. It is a mold of three. Yeah, it's a mold of three. So Calcano's, he's going to, he's going to go hard on him. He's, uh, all right, he has okay. the turn two thought sees, and now he's know what he's up against. At least it'll, it'll let him know how to <laughs> what he's playing against. We see Electromancer, Ascension, two Rituals, a Manamorphose, and some lands. Yeah, it's interesting. You probably have to take the uh, the Ascension here unless you have an answer. Just in terms of uh, you know, it is a way that Shrout can actually convert this uh, this temporary advantage into something game winning, and he yeah. does. This is a pretty decent hand from Shrout. He's there are a lot of draws that really that turn this into a kill. Right now, though, he doesn't have any of them. You know, he's, he's left with a lot of mana at the moment. Now, the Faithless Looting he just drew is going to give him access to a lot more cards. Um, and he does want to try to press the advantage. He doesn't want to just hang out because Calcano missed his second land drop. I mean, mulling the three on the play is a rough one anyway, but it, it, it's very easy for Calcano to just have a Tarmogoy for a Dark Confidant here. And when he draws one more land, suddenly Shroud is under some real pressure. Right. So we're gonna see, it's a fetch here, probably just going for that Faithless Looting off the bat. Um, obviously, Shrout looking for an Ascension or a Past in Flames. Yeah, it's interesting. My understanding was that white bordered basic land were banned in this format, <laughs> but I guess that's actually not the case. All right, he's gonna go ahead and start with Mana Morphos, and he flips that into a card. He gets a Pyretic Ritual, so now, and he's just gonna go ahead and play Electromancer on this turn. Yeah, because, I mean, if Calcano has the bolt, he has the bolt. And he does. But there's also the chance that Calcano had Abrupt Decay or Maelstrom Pulse or anything else. You want to get the Electromancer down there where there's a chance that it'll actually yeah. do something. The loss isn't even that big. What Electromancer would do would make a lot of mana, but really, mana's the one thing that Shroud has plenty of. We see Faithless Looting now. He has a fair amount of lands, just lands and rituals hanging out his hand. I mean, at this point, Shroud is just going to keep digging, looking for Past in Flames or Pyromancer's Ascension. He wants to, he wants some kind of a card that's going to let him leverage the uh, the huge amount of mana that he has access to into a game-winning play. Yeah. So Calcano's hand has an Inquisition of Kozlek <laughs> and a Thrun. So I okay, decent Thrun, quite a ways off. And Shroud did hit his Ascension there off the probe, and Calcano's going to need to find an answer to that one pretty quickly. So this is. God, this is a, wow, this is a rough time to, uh, to Inquisition, too. Yeah, it lets Andrew, well, because the thing is, the first Desperate Ritual you hit doesn't actually power up the Ascension at all. Right. But so he doesn't know. He doesn't know what the last card is. It looks like Past and Flames there. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be game on the next turn, right? Yeah, well, it's close. There, it's close. It's not, not for certain. There's not... A ton, there's not that card drawer in Shroud's hand yet. So, like, he could he could get, like, in theory, he could brick when he goes on. Like, he could run out of card draw and not find more. It's unlikely, though. It's, when he goes to this, this should probably work. Shroud down to 14. Now, the, the thing is, though, Shroud doesn't have to go for anything. He can just sit and hang out. I mean, he knows that Calcano doesn't have any spells. Right. Time is on Shroud's side. Um, the one thing he'd have to worry about would be Abrupt Decay, because he wouldn't want to lose the Ascension. But to I be honest, he's got, he's got enough time where he probably can find another Ascension. I don't, I don't think he would want to go for anything less than like a pretty sure bet combo. Uh, the thing is, though, he can just pass in flames again anyway. So yes. if he just uses this as a mere draw five or something, He's going to be in real good shape, and you never know. He might just end up winning. And that's what he's going to do. So he, he casts Desperate Ritual, uses, casts Pass in Flames. All the cards get flashback. Casts the Desperate Ritual out of the graveyard, and now the Pyromancer Ascension is activated. So he's going to have three red mana here. But, and with the two rituals in his graveyard, he's going to have access to a basically boundless supply of red mana. He's going to have, that's 12 right there. The, uh, the Mana Morphos will put him at 14 and plenty of blue mana. He'll be able to draw six cards, uh, no, I guess eight cards from the uh, the two lootings and the two sleight of hands and the two Gritaxian probes. Yeah. Um, I would be really surprised if he does not win this turn on the spot. Yeah, you know? it seems unlikely that he would brick here. He has four blue, the, the choke here is blue mana right now. So he has four blue, down to two blue, down to 
three blue to cast that sleight of hand. Dixon, yeah, it is unlikely that he that this will not work. I mean, at this point, he literally just needs a grape shot, but a man. I think even one more Manamorphose would lock it up. Yeah, Jataxian Probe drawing him two cards. The other thing to keep in mind is that with all these cards he's drawing, he's going to have access to a whole bunch more rituals and cantrips, and he eventually can flash back the past in flames again. Yep, so casts the cast Desperate Ritual. So that will move him to 11 red and 3 blue in his mana pool right now. And there's the Manamorphos. There's the Manamorphos. So that's, he's making a separate graveyard there so that he, because the, the sideways cards have flashback, um, the non, the straight up ones do not. Technically, Past and Flames should be t the other way. Uh, of course, he could. Uh, he is actually just indicating that Past in Flames is kind of the divider, and all the cards past sure. it were the ones before it. Either way, this one is a done deal. What are we going to see out of uh, out of Calcano in the sideboard? Well, Jund is always pretty good post board. It has a lot of hateful cards for different matchups, and you touched a little bit on some of the cards that you can use. Uh, first, let's start about the one of Graf Digger's Cage. Um, this turn would certainly not be possible were there a Graf Digger's Cage in play. That'll stop Shrout from fra flashing back any of his spells. Um, other than that, though, yeah, you've seen Golgari Charm that can kill an enchantment, Rakdos Charm that can exile a graveyard. Another Thought Seize is always a fine thing to have. Um, and there we see Andrew Shrout, showing, uh, Andrew Shrout shro showing the Grape Shot, meaning that they can advance to game two. Grape Shot counting every spell played this turn. Shrout easily playing at least 18 spells in yeah. order to finish the job. Yeah, even if he hadn't played 18 spells, he could simply Grape Shot, flash back, past in flames, and Grape Shot again, which a lot of times you'll see that kind of line. So he only even needs to get up to nine instead of 18 if he has enough red. Yeah, or even just eight from the past in flames and the Grape Shot, adding oh, right. two more yep. stacks. So eight and 10. Yeah. So uh, Shrout looking to sideboard. It's it's tricky because he didn't see a ton of Calcano's deck. He knows that it's Jund, but um, is there anything he really wants besides Blood Moon? Yeah, I was going to say my guess is if you if you suspect your opponent's on Jund, you can try to Blood Moon them. Jund, attacking Jund's mana has always been a good thing to do against Jund. Um, it's possible you want Empty the Warrens. That's that's a really touchy one, though. So typically against heavy discard decks, Storm likes to board and Empty the Warrens. But we already talked about the fact that Jun plays Maelstrom Pulse. He plays Golgari Charm out of the board. And Anger of the Gods. And he anger. Might, it's not even clear he's going to cut them all because it's possible that he finds a different card to be worse. Right. I'd say, like, Terminate may be a worse card. So it's... I don't... Like, this is... If Andrew's playtested the matchup... I think he'll either know whether or not he thinks empty can work, you know, how often your opponent has an answer to it. But typically, you, I think you'd board it in empty against this style of deck. Yeah, yeah. And, and besides, at the end of the day, uh, adding two Blood Moons and two Empty the Warrens doesn't take up a lot of space in your deck. And the, uh, the ability, I mean, it's very easy to just trim some of these Faithless Lootings. Or possibly, I mean, do you think it's crazy to consider cutting Electromancer? No, I was going to say Electromancer, when I've played Storm in the past, uh, Electromancer is one of the cards that I do like cutting in this matchup, just because I don't trust Jund to not kill the Electromancer every time. Uh, there are a lot of cards that Calcano is going to keep in that are pretty narrow, like Lightning Bolt and Abrupt Decay. You know, you look at the things that Calcano wants to cut. You start with things like Terminate, possibly Anger of the Gods, you know, maybe Thrun. There's a lot of cards that definitely. are definitely Thrun. There's a lot of cards that are pretty bad. It's unlikely that Calcano will be cutting the Bolts and Abrupt Decays, just because... Well, Abrupt Decay, the fact that it also does double yeah. duty and hits the Ascension. It hits the Ascension. But Bolt is a little more questionable. Right. I mean, like, in a perfect world, he'd cut the bolts, but he probably just doesn't have enough things to board in. So it's like that Electromancer still isn't going to live. So it's better to, like, you don't want to play it because you don't really want any of your cards to get remove to eat a removal spell. So my guess is he's going to bring in a Graph Digger's Cage, a Golgari Charm, a Rakdos Charm, a Thought Seize, um, maybe a Sword of Feast and Famine. Yeah, Maybe I, an Engineer Explosives? I don't think he has enough time for the sword in the matchup. Certainly it would give him a way to close out the game, but I don't... In general, I don't think that's something he's he's looking for too hard. But uh, on the way out, he will likely cut the, the two Terminates. Uh, mm -hmm. Anger of the Gods probably will end up going and just relying on Maelstrom Pulse, Golgari Charm, possibly Engineer Explosives to sweep the Empty the, to uh, empty the Warrens tokens. Uh, Maelstrom Pulse also hitting tokens. Yeah, uh, and I, yeah, and I don't Thrun, like I think I think Thrun. Thrun's got to go too. It's just too slow. Yeah, I don't think he ever has a... There's never going to be a window to cast that. I mean, Corsair of Crufix is pushing on it. I think you still keep it in because of how well it functions in the deck, but that card is almost too slow for the matchup as well. All right, 
Each player keeping their hand. All right, so... Pocano in a rare keep of seven. Yeah, we're going to see his deck actually in action this time. It's going to start on a Thought Seize off of Black Cleave Cliffs. And it is so we do see two Pyromancer's Ascensions. Yeah. This is interesting. In spots like this, um, if you have an answer to an Ascension, you can obviously take one and then, you know, Abrupt Decay or Mouse Repulse the other or Golgari Charm the other. But if you don't have an answer to the other Ascension, generally, you might as well just take the Gataxian Probe instead of the f one of the two Ascensions, because if they ever get one Ascension online, they you might as well probably have two. get two online. Once they get one with two counters, that's pretty much it. Well, it doesn't even matter, though. The point yeah. is the second, the second Ascension is, is superfluous, so you might as well take the Probe, because the Probe would give him access to more spells to try to find ways to trigger the Ascension. Right. So he can kind of, like you said, one of the best parts about Thought Seize is it allows the Jun player to sculpt his plan. He can take the Ascension, and that's like being more the control deck. He can take the Probe and try to just to somewhat race the Storm deck. This is not a particularly fast hand that Shroud has kept. No, no, no. This is this is more of a slow and steady type of type of hand. But this is also the type of hand with good a good mix of mana. And Shroud's very well aware. He's got tons and tons of live draws. Yeah, so... So Calcano is representing strength by taking the Ascension. Yes. By taking the Ascension, it suggests that he has an answer to the other one. But now we're going to find out the truth. The truth was, if his hand is a little weak. It has a four lands and a Tarmogoyf. That is the problem with bluffing against people with Gataxi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get to find out you're doing it. To be fair, the, this hand is not particularly good at aggroing either. So maybe he felt like just taking Ascension was what he was supposed to do. Um... But I, yeah, I mean, he, he can take Ascension and hope to draw into Abrupt Decay. That's not unreasonable. Yeah, it's definitely, it, it would appear to be the gamble that he is taking. Yes. And the draw for Shroud off that probe was a Faithless Looting. I think he just wants his Tarmogoyf to be one bigger. He wants, one bigger. He wants <laughs> to bring the Tarmogoyf beats. Can't say I blame the man. Yeah, if you take probe, it's only sorcery. All right, now before Mountain... Of note, if Shroud boarded in the Blood Moons right now, Calcano did not have a basic in his hand, so... And we saw from Shroud searching through his deck, he definitely does have Blood Moons in his deck. He does not have them in his hand, but he has them in his deck. Yeah, well, with the Pyretic Ritual that he has in his hand, he has the potential to Blood Moon as early as next turn if he finds it. He will faithlessly loot. And there, and it, he, is. there it is. So, yeah, he can make a turn two Blood Moon here. This game is going to be over before it started. Well, Kakano has a fetch land, and if he's wise, and go like, and, and if he plays the fetch, you know he's gonna make that turn two goyf, right? So we'll yep. we'll see if he plays around the blood. That man. is a that is a three four goyf that becomes a four five goyf if the ritual <laughs> hits. That is a plan. It is probably the last spell he will ever cast. <laughs> so can he do a full seven seventeen with a timer goyf? Just a second, just a second. Let me check my magic eight ball. All right. All right. Signs point to unlikely. He's he not going to go for it. He's going to discard blood the Blood Moon. All right. That's, that no interest in it. Doesn't even care. Wow. Oh, I wait, does he have two Blood Moons? It looked like he might have a second Blood Moon. Well, it means Calcano will probably play around Blood Moon now, for sure. If you're pointing, very few people only play one Blood Moon. So, Kokano down to 17. We'll see which basic he chooses to get. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and preserve his green mana. Oh, well, yeah, he needs to be able to cast Tarmogoyf this turn. I mean, that's the only thing he has going on. Yeah, so he has to get the forest. I think if Shroud has a Ritual into Blood Moon next turn, he still makes the play. Yep. This is, this is the only thing that Kalkano can do. So, it's not a lost cause yet. His back is against the wall, but... Um, it's funny. Three, missing instant. It's enchantment sorcery. So it looks like Shroud does not have another Blood Moon. Yeah, he's just going to go... Well, he knew that Calcano didn't have an answer to this Ascension. So with these rituals, Cal Cal Shroud just can, you know, go for the plan A of Ascension, activate Ascension. You see here a Mana Morphos and two Pyretic Rituals. Man. Well, this isn't bad. Shroud can ritual his way up, get a counter on the Ascension, flashback the Faithless Looting, and presumably activate Ascension next turn. Uh, wait. Depends on what he draws into. He he can, he can ritual twice, flash back his faithless looting. The, the, yeah, yeah. But until he, if, unless he draws another faithless looting, it won't trigger. Right. But yeah, because when you flash back, yes. obviously, yeah, obviously, flashback yeah. is not going to trigger the ascension. He'd have to find another pyretic ritual, or a mana or a or a Jataxian probe. Yep. Or a faithless looting. Even. He's got a lot of live draws. 
I don't know what he drew for the turn, right? This, this is definitely one matchup where the Desperate Rituals uh, really shine. I mean, um, and Shroud, unfortunately, stuck with Faithless Looting. Yeah. The Desperate Ravings, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Desperate Ravings really shine, and Shroud paying the price from having the Faithless Looting trying to be really turbo, but when you get Thought Siege, you very quickly run out of cards in your hand. All right, so he's going to go for it this turn. That is two Pyretic Rituals, brings him up to four red mana, counter on Pyromancer Ascension. And he did draw a Manamorphos. So Manamorphos, that's, that's a huge draw. That's the second counter on Ascension. Let's go ahead and draw a card off that. So look, he'll probably have red, red, blue, blue in his mana pool at the moment. And now he can flash, if nothing else, he can flash back Faithless Looting and get two, you know, Two active or two, I guess, triggers so that he can uh, look at four new cards. Yeah, he'll be purely likely left with a pretty good four. If he he can even leave up a blue, and if he finds any of his blue cantrips, he'll be able to start drawing cards off that. Definitely, because at the moment he doesn't have anything going for him. But after this resolves, he'll have his choice of two cards, and hopefully one of them will be a blue card draw. Yeah. Of note, he hasn't made a land drop yet this turn. So first, faithless looting. He has two lands in hand. Looks to be at least one more land. And discard steam vents, misty. Now resolving his copy of Faithless Looting. And that's a Past in Flames. Now, now the tricky thing about Past in Flames here is that he does not have the mana for it. So he's going to be right. setting up for sometime in the next two turns. So, so what he needs is more card draw because he just needs to get raw cards to work with because he needs to be able to put some land in play. So if you're thinking that, don't you? You could discard the Past in You discard the Past in Flames then. Just play it out of the graveyard. Hang on to other cards for now. I mean, it costs you one more mana out of the graveyard. But in this spot, he definitely wants Cataxian yeah. Probe, and the land in his hand is worth two is worth two mana. I mean, it's worth a mana for sure. Yeah, and once he finds a ritual, that extra mana for Past and Flames shouldn't be too much of a problem, as now his rituals go from two to six. So he still has a blue mana in his pool, and it looks like he found a sleight of hand. So he's going to be able to keep going. Yeah, he also found of note found a grape shot. I don't know how many spells he's played this turn. It uh, should be enough to kill the Tarmogoyf yeah, if he I wants think, to just stop and give himself some breathing room. I would think if you kill the Tarmogoyf here, I really like where he's left, where he's left himself. It basically forces Calcano to top deck an abrupt decay. And it looks like that's what we're going to see. Yep. So pain off the Shivan Reef. He left that blue up, so now it's blue and red. Grape Shot. We're going to get a count on this Grape Shot for a second, in a second here. Now, what's interesting is he's not completely out of the water. That Raging Ravine is going to do four and then five, uh, which, I mean, obviously, if Shroud doesn't take another point of damage, uh, he's got two, three, four. He's four turns to be knocked to one. So right. he's got four turns of breathing room if he doesn't take another point of damage. It also means if he uses the Shivan Reef for colored mana again, though, it's going to cost him a turn. Definitely. So Grape Shot. Takes care of the Tarmogoyf, probably with some overkill. Andrew we'll get an update on life totals in a second for you. And Kalkan draws Massive. explosives on two. That's huge. That was huge. Suddenly, the game is looking pretty good for Kalkano. I mean, obviously, Shrout has a lot of live draws. If he gets, you know, about three more mana, if he gets like, two rituals. If he can flash back that Past in Flames. Yeah. With, if he flashes back the Past in Flames with at least two mana in his pool. Yeah. Now, interesting, he found a Ritual and a Lightning Bolt. I think he reached for the Ritual and then thought about it. Seeing that Raging Ravine, I'm not, I'm, I don't know which one he kept. I think it would be the Lightning Bolt. He did keep the Lightning Bolt. Yeah. He's like, you know what, wait a minute. Maybe wait, this I, is good. <laughs> maybe I need to establish control. Yeah, he did take a damage off Shivan Reef this turn, so he's down to nine. That did cost him a turn. Yeah, but now that he has no fear of Raging Ravine. Doesn't you know. matter. That, that, that count is no longer relevant. So... Land and a Desperate Ritual, Shrout would like both of them. And that seems fine. All he needs is mana right now. Once he wants, when he, right, he just wants to flash back past and flames with a lot of mana up. I think he just wants to make sure that if Calcano draws a Thought Caesar and Inquisition, he's got a plan. He's not just locking yeah. himself out of the game. He needs to get up to seven mana in a turn so to start the whole, to cast the whole graveyard. Or six mana. Uh, and not have played a land yet, so that he has the hope of one right. of his two probes hitting a land. Keeps them both on top. They are both mana sources. That's land six, right? So that's four mana in play. Five and six are on top of the deck. And he's got a lot of time now, now that he has that lightning bolt. Absolutely. And he's pretty, he is, for the most part, I'd say thought sees proof at the moment too, which is, which is good considering the suite of disruption that Calcano brings in. So what's Calcano looking for right now? I mean, obviously a Graft Digger's Cage or a Rakdos Charm would be huge. A Graft Digger's Cage or Rakdos Charm would be huge. I would say 
scavenging ooze would probably be his best draw. Sure, anything to attack the graveyard, right? Yeah, or, and I like that because it's also a clock. I think, mm -hmm. you know, Calcano's clock's pretty weak at the moment, and Shroud, Shroud has punched himself down to nine. You know, there's, between Jataxian Probes and Shivan Reefs, that it's not that, he doesn't have, you know, Calcano doesn't need to swing that many times to make it lethal. Oh, he decides to hit with the Raging Ravine instead of Thought Seize, and it will cost him his Ravine. Yeah. Sometimes you gamble, and sometimes you lose. He was wondering if he'd kept it. You could see it on his face. He, he had to make, he had to make, he had to call Shroud at least. Grove the Burn Willows made there. And now it's Dark Confidant. So this is going to put some pressure on Shroud. Shroud does not need very much in order to win. He needs two more mana. Yeah, and that draw was a desperate ritual this so turn. That's, that's, he's that's one. Halfway there. There's worry every turn he waits that Confidant is drawing an extra card for Calcano. He could try to go for it now because if he hits one of the two, uh, if one of his two probes hits a land, he's probably he going to win right now. However, exactly. it's such a gamble to go for it right now. There's so many things could go wrong. Well, yeah, especially because that's it. That's the last pass in flames that. Well, no, he has. He plays. What is it? He plays three pass in flames, right? Yeah, but he's not even going to need to get that big. If if he uses the bolt and the grape shot in the graveyard, he's. I mean, I think he goes for it this turn, right? He has two more pass in flames. The, the potential to win this turn is is so is so good for you that and you're going to kill the Dirk Confidant even if you fail. Right. I bet he starts. We will see if Shroud agrees. The only problem, his life total will end up at about four. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to hit himself a lot of times. So we see Desperate Ritual. This is the first spell of the turn. That up to three red mana. He's going to go ahead and tap two more to make it for five. That fla flashes back past in flames for the second spell of the turn. And we are going to see if Shroud can get this. Everything in the yard has flashback. He's going to start, as you said, with the Jataxian probes because he needs to find another land. And it was a thought seize. And there's the land. Shroud this should goes be a down to deal. five. This, it's unlikely this one whiffs. Uh, yeah, I think it's just academic, actually. He's gonna, like, there's he, no chance at all in it. Yeah, because yeah. all he has to do is cast all the spells in his graveyard, a lightning bolt, and a grape shot, and he'll have enough That's to do enough. 13. Yeah, he's down, knows that there's a thought seize. There's nothing that can get him. Goes down to three. He's willing to shock off shock for steam vents there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really it's easy. It's just there. Yeah, yeah. Like, at this point, you can just count the spells. He's already played Gataxian Probe and uh, Pass in Flames in a Ritual. He'll play another Gataxian Probe, uh, a Manamorphos, three more Rituals, uh, a lightning bolt, uh, it looks like possibly four rituals, a lightning bolt, a blood moon, uh, and a grape shot. So that's, so he's casting cards out of the yard, it's spell four, five, six, yeah, this is... Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, because lightning bolt's gonna put it at 10, uh, put Calcano at 10, which means the Shroud just needs to assemble nine spells before the grape shot. Seven. Now he's changing some mana to blue, and drawing cards while he's at it. Yeah, I mean, it's academic anyway at this point. Yep. It, it looks like uh, we're going to see Manamorphos, another Manamorphos. Go ahead for a sleight of hand. That's number eight. Just playing the cheapest spells possible. You see, there's another, an empty the Warrens and a ritual there. I think he's just going to take the ritual. Doesn't really matter what he takes. No, spell number nine is Manamorphose. And yes, now all he has to do is cast the Lightning Bolt and then the Grape Shot, and that should be good. Yeah, I can't imagine why anybody would uh, want yep. there to be less and of this deck. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so two games to zero. Andrew Shrout defeats Christian Calcano. He'll move to 5-0. and oh. Calcano down to 4-1. and one. That was definitely uh, Storm doing what Storm does. Obviously, a little bit of a rocky start from Calcano, but he knows that he knows that he took a game.